definition he chose for evolution was interesting because it started with living organisms changing. Well, okay, then if you don't believe this is part of the real evolution, then help me get this out of the textbooks because the students are taught that non-living material came alive. They are taught spontaneous generation, I assure you. Here's a typical textbook. 4.6 billion years ago, the earth cooled down. As the earth formed, it was like the moon, and there were hot pools of bubbling lava. And oceans formed as it rained on the rocks for millions of years. Yes, boys and girls, millions of years of torrential rains created great oceans. Now, if this is not really part of the argument about evolution, then help me get this junk out of the textbooks. If you really want to make the argument about evolution, variations, you know, one, two species coming from a common kind, well, then I'll, I'll join you on that. That happens, okay? But they're sneaking in a lot of other stuff under this umbrella of evolution. This textbook says the first self-replicating systems must have emerged from this organic soup. Swirling in the waters of the oceans is a bubbling broth of complex chemicals. Progress from a complex chemical soup to a living organism is very slow. Well, I guess it is. It's totally stopped. It doesn't happen at all. That's how slow it is. <laughs> but the kids are taught this kind of stuff. Now, you have to really watch this. I've learned in the last couple of years, the evolutionists are backing off of pushing their whole theory, and they're trying to get the kids to bite off a little bitty chunk and believe in microevolution, which is certainly true. They're trying to change the definition to mean only changing in living organisms after they've come alive. But I'm telling you, this other stuff is in the books, folks. This one tells the kids, the humans, the birds, and the crocodiles have a common ancestor. Now, that's not observed. This is somebody's religion. They've mixed it in with science. Everything inside this circle is religious speculation. You might see a variety of crocodiles, and you might see a variety of humans coming from a common ancestor, but that doesn't prove the crocodile and the human are related. See, they're really, these evolutionists are really good, and I must admire their enormous faith. They're able to take a little bit of evidence and extrapolate it to mean a whole lot more than is obvious. They assume, because they see, you know, Di several different species of gulls that this proves the gulls and the bananas and the people are related. Then we have to have um, macro evolution. That's changing between major kinds of animals. That's never been observed. Speciation is not macro evolution. Micro evolution, variations within the kinds, not species, that has been observed and that one is scientific. The first five are religious. So when I say evolution is a religion, that's exactly what I'm meaning. And trust me, all six of them are put in together. This one is science, and I object to calling it microevolution, but we're kind of stuck with the word. It's just a variation, folks. That's all that's ever been observed. And I, I guarantee by the end of the evening, you will not have heard one example of anything above this level right here. There are no known examples of any kinds of evolution above the speciation level. The evolutionists believe all life forms appeared came from a common ancestor three billion years ago. Now today we have 250 varieties of dogs. Some say more than that. Depends how you count them. And they probably had a common ancestor. It was a dog. And some people might say they're different species or subspecies. Okay, well you can pick any terms you want, but they're the same kind of animal. That certainly doesn't prove what the evolutionist theory teaches, that all the dogs of the world, yeah, you got a variety, big dogs and little dogs. And a three-year-old will tell you it's the same kind. Let's take a test here. We got a dog, a wolf, a coyote, and a banana. Which one is not like the others? And a three-year-old can figure it out, okay? They're the same kind. And this is where the argument comes in. See, the evolutionists believe all forms of life came from one ancestor, and that ancestor came from a rock. It rained on the rocks for millions of years and produced soup in the oceans, and the ocean soup came alive. That's exactly what they're teaching. And I resent that. See, they try to make the, make the kids make a gigantic leap of faith and logic to going from the observed microevolution into believing in macroevolution. And that's where the whole problem comes in. Macroevolution is a fantasy. It's based upon imagination. And they keep arguing about where is this line. I, I'm sure I'll get the question later on. What's the exact definition of kind? Well, I don't know exactly. I think from the Bible we would have to conclude it's those that were originally able to reproduce and produce viable offspring. And they may have diversified now to where a horse and a zebra maybe aren't, you know, interfertile. Uh, maybe they still are, I don't know. But um, It's obviously the same kind. I think the kind was the original reproducing pairs of animals. So the number six, microevolution, is true, but other five get smuggled in. And the kids are deceived. They're given one definition of evolution, like descent with modification. Like this one says, evolution is change over time. 
In other words, there is no doubt that living things have changed over time. Notice this now. They're starting with living things, aren't they? Well, if you want to start there, then great. Everything before that, let's help me get it out of the textbooks. All this origin of life from non-living material stuff, that stuff ought to be removed. This one says, evolution is defined as a change in species over time. Now, folks, I'm here to tell you that is not really what they mean. They're using this as a hook to get the kids to believe in evolution, and then they're going to switch it to the real definition. They're going to include cosmic evolution and organic evolution, and anybody that doesn't believe in all six definitions is going to be told, well, you don't understand science. <laughs> Inevitably, in every debate I do, the opponent, will, somewhere along the line, will say, well, the average audience just doesn't understand the complexity of these things. Translated, that means, I'm smart, you're too dumb. I guarantee you'll get that impression somewhere along the line. If you listen to the evolutionists talk long enough, they want you to think, you're just too dumb to understand it. You need to come to this college and take a bunch of courses so you can finally understand all the complexities of evolution. See, in advertising, it's called bait and switch. If I said, I'm going to give you a new Mercedes for 10 bucks. You showed up at my house and I said, well, I'm sorry, uh, how about this one? It's only 99000 <laughs> That's called bait and switch. That's illegal. People go to jail for that. And I think some of these textbook authors ought to go to jail for baiting the kids to believe in evolution with one definition and then switching it midstream. And trust me, that's exactly what they do. We've got no quarrel with truth, folks, and I've got no quarrel with science. I love science. But tonight, I suspect you're going to continually hear evolution trying to be smuggled in with science. And I'll trust, I assure you, I won't let it happen. Not under my watch, anyway. Evolution is not science. I object to lies being included in the textbooks. There is no real evidence for evolution. I'd like to find out from the other. You asked me several questions, Mr. Paulson, Dr. Paulson. Uh, here's some for you to answer. What real evidence do you have to show the Big Bang, my macroevolution? Matter came from nothing, which is what the evolutionist has to believe. What's your best evidence that chemicals, any chemical has ever produced a different kind of chemical, i.e. chemical evolution? What's your best evidence to show that one star has ever formed? That would be st stage three. What is your best evidence to show that life came from non-living matter, i.e. organic evolution? What is your best evidence that any animal has ever produced a fundamentally different kind of animal? If the gulls, getting from a white gull to a black gull that can't breed together, if that's your best evidence, well, then I win. I'd like to see a whole lot better than that. There's still a gull. Um, <clears throat> I collect public school textbooks. I have hundreds of them, okay? Here's the type of thing the kids are exposed to. They're going to say, we have evidence of evolution. They have whole chapters, sometimes whole units on this, sometimes entire courses just about evolution. But look at the stuff they give these kids as evidence. Evidence from fossils, from structure, molecular biology. I could not believe he brought up some of the things he did. We'll get into those in a minute as his evidence for evolution that had been proven wrong years ago. Here's the typical stuff they use. Evidence from fossils, evidence from vestigial structures, embryology. I can't believe you brought that one up. That was proven wrong in 1874. DNA similarities, fossil, similar structure of limbs, the homology argument. We'll sort of deal with that one in a minute. And then oftentimes they'll say, well, there's poor design. Darwin said, if my theory be true, numberless intermediate varieties must assuredly have existed. Well, you're right about that, Charlie. Where are they? Well, even David Robb, who's a strong believer in evolution, said, in the years after Darwin, his advocates hoped to find predictable progressions. In general, these have not been found. Yet the optimism has died hard. <laughs> Boy, that's the truth. And some pure fantasy has crept into textbooks. <gasps> you're kidding. Fantasy in our textbooks. Their evidence they use, they say fossils prove evolution. Now hold on just a minute. Let's, let's, let's put this in a court of law, okay? I'm going to be one of the attorneys, and I'm going to, the, the opposition stands up and says, Your Honor, we have evidence from evolution because we found a fossil. Like he mentioned Archaeopteryx. Which